What's good everyone? Welcome to the first video on the Spiced Up Gaming channel. Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite games and one I've been obsessed with lately, College Hoops 2K8. Me and my friend have been playing the shit out of this game for the last couple months and we wanted to share some recruiting hacks that we've picked up on. We'll start off with hack number one, location, location, location. The school you're coaching at matters in recruiting. Shocking, right? No, I'm not talking about the prestige of your school. Obviously, if you're at Duke, you should have no problem signing top guys unless you just aren't a good coach. The location is in where your school is located. If you can find a school in a metro area, we had a lot of success at Villanova located in Philadelphia, for example. You stand a better chance in recruiting than if you were at, say, South Dakota State. States also kind of play a role in this. Think of a more highly populated state. You've got more options to choose from. States like New York, California, Florida, Texas, and so on always have elite prospects. The region you're in also matters. It seems that Rhode Island and Minnesota, for whatever reason, are always perennially raking in top talent on our legacies, and I think that stems from the region they're located in. Next up, using the world and junior college recruits. This is especially important early on in legacy when recruits may be hard to come by at smaller schools. Oftentimes, our rosters in year three to four of Legacy are comprised of 50% or more international guys. For some reason, the CPU typically just doesn't recruit them. World players can be tough though. Sometimes if you don't get their interest levels high enough, they just won't sign anywhere. I guess the appeal of college girls and playing for a terrible basketball team just isn't worth coming to America for sometimes. Once you get into the offseason, world players are hard because you aren't able to visit them unless they're in Canada or Mexico. That means getting their points up can be challenging. Usually if I'm not at 85% or higher in the final week, I try to offer someone else who I may have a shot at. Junior college players can be easier to sign to than the high school prospects, I feel like, when you're at a smaller school. I try and find the JC freshmen because at least then you have three more years of them, but it's all situational really. If you have a solid team that you think can make a good tournament push, there's nothing wrong with trying to get some high caliber JUCO guys to round out your roster. You should be able to contend for most three star and lower JUCO guys wherever you are, and at most places you can get the four or five star guys more often times than not if you play your cards right and go after targets that make sense. But we'll talk about that coming up. Next is a hack that I think a lot of people may not know. How you set up your schedule has a direct impact on what you can do week to week. This is crazy, but something I picked up on after hours of gameplay. When you have a game on Sunday, for whatever reason, the game will not let you travel to see recruits that week. That means no home visits or scouting games. This has come back to bite me before many times when I'm getting ready to go into early signing period and I'm in a battle with other schools for a guy and lose those precious points because I'm unable to visit. I found that checking my calendar app and lining it up with the year of the game is best for this. You really only need to worry about avoiding the Sunday games before the early signing period. After that, it shouldn't have too much of an impact, but can definitely give you that extra edge in recruiting against other schools early. Usually what I do with setting up the schedule is we'll only play a game a week in mid-November, starting in mid-November. Uh, that way you just have more time to recruit. It does kind of knock you down. I probably wouldn't recommend that if you're an independent unless you're really loading up your schedule and beating some of those top teams. But when you have the conference and conference tournament, it really doesn't impact it too much. Uh, another thing that is more known, but in case you didn't know, if you simulate to the second week of the season on the day following the jersey icon, I believe that's a Tuesday, that allows you to be the first to offer players a scholarship, another potential boost. Now let's look at the ABL. I'll be honest, this is usually where I hand the controller over to my friend. We don't ever actually play the games, although doing this does give you additional recruiting points to use during the season. What we do do, though, is use this as a time to get some scouting in. Usually this is the area where you can start identifying targets for next year if you haven't already. Then just tab over and see where they are playing with their ABL team. Try to get several games of your targets by toggling through the selections to their team. This may not have a huge impact and interest, but will save you time in the realm of scouting guys. Now, Some people say that scouting those younger players, uh, freshmen, sophomores, when they're in high school, especially locally, can have an impact. We usually don't do this. 
uh, I kind of leave that up to you. I, I've, we've tried that before, and especially at the smaller schools, we didn't see a real correlation. Uh, but if you've had success with that, drop us a comment uh, so everyone knows. But for us, we haven't had a whole lot of success in that category. With that in mind, how you spend your time and points can make or break you. Pay close attention, especially early in your career, on making sure you put points into everyone before you jump into taking that home visit. I found that by doing the visits first, sometimes you screw yourself out of being able to do additional tasks like make phone calls. I think it's best to go ahead and get your phone calls emails in for all your targets, then circle back around and see if you still have the visit or scout functions available. Better to hit everyone than just one player, right? Along with that, I'd recommend checking in on your targets every week, see how their interest levels are fluctuating. You can usually tell fairly quickly whether or not you'll have a legitimate shot at nabbing someone. You just have to know when to fight your battles. If you're number 19 on a kid's list, you probably don't have a chance. If another school has already offered and their bar is way higher than yours, bail. The only time you can ignore this advice is late in the season when a guy only has one to two schools on their list and they're maxed out on interest without a scholarship offer. Sometimes this means the school is out of scholarships but still recruiting these players. It doesn't always work that way, but sometimes once the prospects realize their dream school is out of scholarships, you can get the sloppy seconds. That's all we've got for our recruiting hacks. Make sure to That's all we've got for our recruiting hacks. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as we will have plenty of College Hoops 2K8 content coming and more, and you don't want to miss it.